What's up guys, um, today I'm going to go ahead and show you guys uh, the um, firewall in, in uh, greater detail and in depth. We're actually going to go ahead and take a look at all the settings and how it's actually configured um, for this rack and for our entire network. So we'll go ahead and look at the actual software that's running on it and how it's set up. But just in case you guys haven't seen my other videos, I'm just going to go ahead and give you a quick rundown of this box. So this box um, was a, uh, when I bought it, it was a Citrix Access Gateway. I re-imaged it. It now has PFSense. It is actually a super micro server box. So this is actually a, technically it's pretty much a server. It has a motherboard and everything on there. It's got RAM, it's got a processor, it's got the whole nine yards. So it's pretty much a server. But um, if we take a look at it real quick, uh, that firewall is actually our main firewall. It comes from here. You have the, um, the WAN or the wide area network that is coming from the cable modem. And that is this blue cable right here. So that's our wide area network. And this is our LAN right here, our local network. And um, this box is the firewall. It also supplies DHCP addresses. And uh, it's also got a squid proxy on it to speed up uh, internet requests and stuff like that. So um, we'll go ahead and look at that box real quick here on the network topology. I have a really good explanation of how everything's hooked up in my topology video. but. This is uh, the internet here, this is the firewall, and this is the local network. So between the internet and our local network, we have the firewall, and that's this box right here. So this box is what pretty much protects us. Uh, we'll look at it one more time here on a more advanced topology graph. And this is uh, the internet, that's the packet shaper, and this is the uh, firewall right here. So it has the firewall, router, and proxy server. That's because those are all built in this. The uh, PFSense version that we're running, does everything. It has a proxy server, a router, and a firewall all built in one. So that's what's so cool about that software. And then this uh, just runs out into the packet shaper. We're going to actually do a whole other video on this um, box right here and this will be covered in a, a separate video but this is all just the firewall. So let's go ahead and take a peek at what this looks like on uh, the actual settings and stuff on the computer. So we'll go ahead and do that right now. This is the um box the uh, firewall here in the browser. I just typed in the uh, local IP address and the port and everything and uh, this is the uh, dashboard for the box. So it just shows all the basic information uh, the name of the uh, machine, the version that we're running 2.03 i386 so it's an x86 um, package 32-bit. Um, it's running in uh, FreeBSD 8.1 so that's the actual operating system that PFSense is running in and it comes embedded pretty much in that operating system. Um, it's the latest version. So uh, the box it has a, I think it's a four core, I'm sure, I think that's what that means, but it's an Intel 3.4 gigahertz, which is actually pretty uh, powerful for this uh, application. Um, just, you know, basic stuff. Uh, here's all the usage. So this is the CPU usage, the uh, RAM, the swap usage that's uh, using your hard disk. Uh, as sort of like a RAM itself, you can use the, the you can use a part of the hard disk to assist the RAM if it needs it. And then there's the actual hard disk that's uh, eight, it's an 80 gigabyte disk, so it says 1% right now, and that's just going to store things like logs and all the squid caching uh, files and stuff like that are going to be stored in the hard disk. So that's where all that's going. Um, if we take a look up here, we have the interfaces. That's the WAN and the LAN. Those are their IP addresses and how they're hooked up. We have a gigabit coming in here, 100 meg there. Um, they're both full duplex, so those are the uh, interfaces. And I'm going to try and go over this best I can. There's a lot of stuff, tons of options. So I'm just going to kind of show you guys. I'm just going to go through everything and see uh, what we have going on here. So uh, basically, we're running the. This is the web configurator. N nothing magical, much magical going on here. This is just how you access this uh, actual page that we're looking at right here through the browser, the port, the protocol, um, and how many uh, connections you can have at the same time of this configurator. There's n really nothing much going on here that has to do with uh, us, the system. So if we look at, um, if we keep going to, uh, let's go to not firmware, uh, general setup, no. Let's go ahead and just take a quick look at the packages. So this is actually what we have installed. There's lots of packages available for this machine. As you can see, there's tons of options. And it just explains what they do here. 
here's the actual package and you can just download it and it's really nice anyways um so if we look at what we have installed here we have um basically a network management this is basically uh the one of the firewalls here um I'm not sure exactly what each one of these does specifically. I installed them when I was like really paying attention and did it all. But anyways, I'll just show you guys. This is the bandwidth D. This is a really nice um, way to monitor your usage. Uh, file manager. It's PHP file manager. That's so we can actually look at all the files on the disk of this firewall. And I can see, I can actually open up the files and upload files to this hard disk. And like I can open up the log files or I could, you know, let's say it has a log file on here that you can view on the actual website or on the actual web uh, manager but I want to download it to the computer I can use the file manager to actually download that log to um, the uh, to my computer um, the filer is basically the same thing I just kinda downloaded two versions of the same thing just to see which one I like better and I kept both of them um, let's see so this this is another one that uses um, it shows you what you can uh, all your usage and stuff it's more of it's another monitoring system a lot of these are monitoring and it uses PHP to do that um, so let's keep looking at it um, again another traffic monitor it shows you the traffic I downloaded a lot of these just to see different packages for traffic monitoring different graphs different ways of displaying the the traffic usage and I just kinda kept all of them and then uh, there's the Squid 3, of course, you know, that's the, the proxy server which does all the caching and stuff. That's a really powerful package, and I love that one. So um, we'll just go ahead and look uh, at a few more things. Let's see, uh, really nothing else here that's worth looking at. So th let's just take a look at our LAN. Our LAN is a static address, so this is actually our DHCP server as well. So this is the LAN, the interface is enabled, and... Um, Basically, the address is 10.0.0.1, so that is actually our DNS gateway throughout our, our entire network is 10.0.0.1, and that's the IP address of this uh, network card. If we look up here, that's also the IP address that we're using to access uh, this. So that's the IP address of the machine, the local IP address of the machine. Um, uh, so it has also the option to do the, the gateway. Um, it's not really going to receive a gateway because this is the gateway. So, And then 24 is the subnet, so that's 255.255.00, you know. Um, and then down here is blocking ports, so you can block the first, um, or no, this is uh, blo blocking private networks. So um, it's just to basically block traffic um, going in and out of certain uh, IP addresses and stuff like that. Um, I don't really ever check those because I don't really need to and I don't like blocking traffic if I don't have to sometimes it can create unwanted results so I just didn't screw around with those uh, nothing you know there's nothing really that significant uh, let's go ahead and take a peek at the WAN real quick so it is DHCP because our um, it's kinda hard to understand how it works but this is actually receiving it's not it's not acting as a DHCP server but it's acting it's receiving from a DHCP server, so our modem is giving an address. It's assigning the WAN card an address. So this WAN port is DHCP. It's set up like that, and our router, or not our router, I'm sorry, our modem is going to give it an address, and that, that address is going to be given by our internet service provider. Of course, it's enabled, and uh, same thing down here. Uh, I don't have anything blocked. Um, there's no DHCP client because uh, we don't need that, really. Um, that's that's not needed in this case. We just have our modem giving this a DHCP address, and it's not our D our DHCP server is set up um, on our LAN on our LAN side. So um, aliases, I don't have any set up right now, but this is basically just so you can give a name. I can put a name in here, and I can specify an IP address. So I could say like server one, and I can say 10.0.0.3, and that way, in all my firewall rules and stuff when I specify server 1 if I ever change the IP address of that server I don't have to like change it in 50 different rules I just change it here and in all my rules I specify server 3 as or server 1 as server 1 
and then I just change the IP address in here once and it changes it in all the rules. So that's kind of cool, but I don't have that set up right now. I just use the IP addresses because I don't think I'm ever going to change them. Anyways, this is port forwarding. Um, right now, uh, I'm probably going to change all this once I do make things go live because I don't want people getting into my servers. But these are all the servers SSHing. This is all the SSH ports. So um, all my servers here, this is uh, server 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then they're all 22, port 22 on the local side. So this is the local port number. Um, you can see server one. This is all of our secure shell ports. And then where destination ports is the output port number. So if I go on the global IP address and then put in this port number, I can access this server anywhere on the internet. So this allows me to access these servers outside of my local network on the on the actual internet. Port 85 that's my own cloud server um, my actual web server is running on HTTP so that's why I don't have own cloud running on my port 80 this would be my website and that's running on server 1 right now and then um, SMTP that's for a mail server um, that's actually not running right now and then again I have own cloud running again on port 443 for HTTP secure um, I have that so um, because at my school they block uh, port 85 they block a lot of ports but um, I guess because I'm using a secure port they kinda see it as more secure so they allow me to access it through the port 443 even though there's no certificates or anything but I can access my own cloud uh, server at school if I forward it to 443 so this actual server is hosting it on port 80 you can see locally it's port 80 um, but it, it hosts it on the actual internet on 443 four, and port 85. And then basically this is where it's sending it to, the WAN, the WAN address, and then the protocols. Um, and then none of that crap really matters. But if I wanted to set up a new one, I'll just basically run it through you real quick. You have the WAN um, destination port. So this is the output port. This is the um, IP address of the local machine. And then uh, this is the local port number and that's really all you set up all the other crap doesn't really matter other uh, protocol you want to do and then you of course uh, don't disable it so um, that's pretty much it for the port forwarding and we'll just go ahead and go down here and uh, hit cancel and go back up here so let's take a look at some other things uh, we'll go back to the uh, firewall so these are all the rules defined this is throughout everything um, all the rules defined for our firewall so that's just gonna dis determine what can go in and out of the firewall, what ports to block, what you know. You can see down here you can pass, which is pretty much uh, uh, forwarding it. You can block that port. You can reject. Um, you can reject uh, requests to that port, and you can also log all the activity on that IP address or port or whatever you want to do. So that's what all these stand for. Um, so if we go back up. Let's see what else there is. Uh, there's the traffic shaping here. This also has traffic shaping. Uh, this is actually quite advanced to set up, and I don't do it because, again, traffic shaping kind of limits your network. It puts limits, but um, I do traffic. I do do traffic shaping on my wireless router, which I'll explain that later. But that's to um, limit the amount of network uh, bandwidth that all the wireless devices can take in the house, so that they don't take up all, of, you know, the bandwidth that the servers need. Um, Virtual IPs, we don't have any of those created right now. Uh, bandwidth D, so this is pretty cool. Um, I don't know, one of them is kind of hard to do, so this is bandwidth D. Um, it, it, it does take a while to actually load, so um, basically it you can see your traffic over daily, weekly, monthly, yearly. It does take a while to build it, so um, I'm just going to actually just exit out of this right now because it's nothing too amazing. Um, but uh, let's see, DHCP relay. Uh, we don't have that set up. Uh, DHCP server, I'll go ahead and show that to you guys because this is the DHCP server. So we can see that we have it enabled on the LAN interface. Uh, there's our subnet, subnet mask. Anyways, available range, so it starts at 10.0. Uh, that's, the, that's the actual range it can do. This is the range that we're using. So it starts assigning DHCP addresses at dot .10 and it goes all the way up to dot .245. And, um, I actually don't want it like that. I actually want it to be assigning DHCP addresses at dot one hundred 
because I want to keep all my DHCP addresses higher and then all my uh, static addresses lower to, just to keep them separate so they don't ever conflict. So I'm actually going to update that. But all this stuff is just a bunch of crap you really don't need. You can put like lease times, uh, you can put domain names and all that stuff, but I really don't care about that. I just want a DHCP server. I don't care about really how, how often it leases it or anything like that. So now we are ranging from .100 to .245. Uh, that does, you know, of course, limit our DHCP server to 145 devices, but we really don't have that many, so it doesn't really hurt us at all. Um, this is really cool. Uh, up here, you guys can't really see what I'm doing. Sorry about that. Uh, dynamic DNS. Uh, so this is for, like, when I get uh, a DNS ser service for my domain name, I can put that in there, and it will update, because I ha if I have a DHCP global IP address, it will update that automatically. So I could choose a, a service, let's just say, I can choose, like, no IP, the website no IP, or the service Dyn DNS, and it will act as, normally they have a software you can download and order, you can put on your computer to update their record, their A record for your IP address to that domain name. And this will do it for you. My actual firewall can update their A record for my domain name on their uh, on their service. So like, if I had the domain name techgeekforums.com and I have a, a DHCP so it's a changing address on my global IP address, that's not good because when it changes, that domain name is no longer going to work. But this um, software will allow me to automatically update that address even if I'm not around or anything. So um, then you have a load balancing. You can load balance servers and stuff. I don't use that. I haven't really looked into it because I have a whole other unit specifically for load balancing. And I'll do that in another video. But anyways, let's go to the proxy server. This is uh, really cool. So um, this is running on the LAN. You can also have a LAN, a WAN one too. So you can have it also so that you can access it away from home. You can actually use this proxy server away from home. This is the port that it's running on, the standard 3128 for uh, Squid Proxy. Um, just a bunch of crap that you don't really need to know. Uh, really nothing else, just the log uh, directories and stuff like that. So um, let's go ahead and actually take a look at this. So if we go up here, uh, there's remote cache, local cache. So we're actually looking at the local cache. Um, it is enabled in offline mode, so it doesn't actually have to confirm with the server. If it has a file that you're trying to get and it has it on the local disk, it'll just give it to you from there. It doesn't actually have to have a network connection to to get it. This is the max amount of and megabytes of uh, caching that it'll store. I have that number pretty high. I did jack up a lot of the numbers. So and and then here it is in kilobytes. This is the minimum file size and the maximum file size um, single files that it will actually cache on the hard drive and this is the hard disk location this is where it stores all the cache um, the memory size this is how much RAM it takes so I put 256 megs so it'll store um, up to 256 megabytes of RAM for caching um, maximum single object is 1024 kilobytes so one megabyte and then uh, it has dynamic uh, content caching um, that's just to store like dynamic web pages and stuff that change so um, what's really cool here is we can look at the uh, real time and this will show everything um, oops in real time and this is showing all the the um, so you can see that we have Netflix going on right here someone's watching Netflix right now and um, this is the IP address that's calling it. So this is actually our router. This is dot one hundred. This is our and this is my computer right here. Uh, this is the computer I'm on right now, one oh six. But it shows um, the time. It shows the file that's storing, and this is actually storing it on the cache. So, and it's a real time update. And I mean, you can go and I can select up to two hundred lines. So now I mean, it just goes on and on and on, and it shows you all the files that it's storing. And this is actually the real time cache right here, what it's actually storing either on the RAM or on the hard disk, and it shows uh, the destination address that it's connecting to to get that file from. So that's the Netflix. And I mean, it's just really cool. It shows you, it's a really powerful tool, this caching. And this allows us, this speeds up our network a lot and saves a ton of bandwidth by uh, running caching. It's really worth it. Um, see what else there is. Reverse proxy. So basically, um, in here, reverse proxy is basically just as it sounds. I can speed up 
serve times on my website. So I can have this um, act as a proxy server and cache my uh, website from my actual local server so that when you guys go to visit my website, it'll look if it's in this cache first before it actually goes to my web server. And that takes stress off my web server and saves on bandwidth and stuff like that. And it loads your guys' pages faster using that. And then here's a real-time graph. It kind of combines the real-time graphs, which is kind of, yeah, I don't like that, but whatever. Um, so that's uh, the, all the caching and stuff. Uh, there's also a wake on LAN option. I tried doing that, and like always, wake on LAN is kind of iffy. It sometimes works, sometimes it doesn't, and it didn't really work for me, but um, it's a cool feature if it does work, but uh, it didn't work for me. But wake on LAN is basically a way of turning, if you guys don't know what it is, it's a way of turning on your computer or server or whatever if it's actually turned off. And it does that by looking for the network card by its MAC address. And yeah, sometimes it works, most time it doesn't. It's just your network card has to be in standby and stuff. There's a dashboard that we started out on. Um, let's see. Uh, let's go to interfaces. So this is just everything about our interfaces. This is the WAN interface and the LAN interface, and it shows all their addresses and crap like that. So this is cool. You can see the traffic here on our WAN. We've had in, we've had 12.93 gigabytes, and out we've had upload of 4.29 gigabytes. That's uh, the amount of packets. And same thing here. It's pretty much just backwards. Um, this is our LAN interface and uh, in and out packets. So, um, and there's the DHCP address. You can actually release the DHCP address um, for the WAN interface and everything like that. So uh, let's keep going. Um, there's the gateway. Our gateway is running on the uh, WAN. It's being assigned this address. Uh, or that's the gateway uh, IP address, and it's being assigned the WAN address. Um, let's see what else. There's really nothing else. There's the uh, traffic graph. So this is real time here. Um, this is bandwidth in and bandwidth out, and it builds a, a graph in real time. This is showing you the actual traffic happening on the on the WAN uh, interface. You can also look at the traffic on the LAN interface if you want, and uh, it shows it right now in kilobits per second, and that'll adjust based on uh, your maximum and minimum values will adjust based on really how much your traffic you're using. So you can see that it just changed to 600 kilobits a second. Um, so yeah, that's a graph of real-time traffic. Pretty cool, but it's nothing compared to what the uh, packet shaper will do, which is the other box that I'll discuss in another video. But it's kind of nifty and neat to have. Um, everything else is really not much of anything else. This is all the uh, currently connected machines. We have the the host name of it, the uh, IP address, the MAC address, and then the interface that it's connected to. So that's kind of cool. You can see everything that's on it. Um, and we can see that all of our static addresses are kind of lower. Uh, there's really no static addresses right now, but and then all of our DHCP addresses are .100 or higher. So that's really cool for separating our static from our DHCP addresses and keeping them from conflicting. Um, another look. I mean, there's really nothing else. This is just how all of our PF. This is the setup of our PF Sense. Um, so. I mean, that's pretty much it. There's really nothing else to show you guys, but that's how we set everything up. There's This is our DHCP server, our, our caching, and our we do all of our port forwarding and everything through here. This is basically like our router. Um, it is our router, but it's not wireless or anything. So this is uh, the heart of our entire network. Um, and just so you guys know, um, when I do like make my website and everything, I am going to change all the values in here, like all the ports and stuff, so that you guys can't really go in there and get into this kind of stuff. Because I don't like, I don't want you guys getting in here. Because if you guys, a lot of the information I've shown here on the screen, you guys can use to like hack into me if you really know what you're doing. But um, basically, I'm just going to like change up a lot of the stuff. It's got a really advanced password and stuff on it. I think it's pretty secure. But um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, Hope you guys don't uh, hack into me or anything, but <laughs> you never know. There's there's crazy people out there that just really want to take you down. But anyways, um, we'll go back to the uh, dashboard one more time, and that's pretty much it. Um, it's a really cool software. Uh, I recommend you guys check it out. Uh, if we go and just do a quick search of pfsense.org, this is it. 
you guys should definitely here we'll go ahead and check it out you can go here and just uh, download it it gives you all the information about it and stuff there's lots of stuff and it's really cool um, it's, again it's free it's open source it's great so um, I might do a tutorial on what not and how to install it there's lots of tutorials on there out on the internet about it but um yeah it's pretty cool guys um that's pretty much it for this video uh hope you guys enjoyed it and like always guys uh if you do have any more questions or anything or anything you want to know definitely shoot me a comment or uh, email inbox or whatever or if my form is up definitely go there and uh, talk about it there um hope you guys enjoyed it and as always guys have a good one